He has given her the right. Jesus has given Our Lady the right to mark all of her children so that these apocalyptic scourges that are coming can't even touch them. The whole world is sick. Are you worried about America? I am. Believe the impossible and you can do the incredible. Can you, so, Daniel, can I pause be, you for one second? Can you explain yes. the notion of what an anti-pope is? Because I think there's there can be a lot of confusion just about that. Um, mm -hmm. an, an anti-pope, does that mean an invalid pope? Right, or, so that's the key. Yeah, yeah or is, is he so, just yeah. like, so, so, so he, he's such an instrument, you could say, of, of Satan for whatever reason, that he's seen as like just anti what he should be as the Pope, mm -hmm. but he's actually yeah. The pope. So this is this kind is of how key. people this see is, Francis. Yeah. So that's that's why some people think they're in their rights to just say and do whatever they want with respect to Francis, which I think is is very misled because I believe he is the Pope. So an anti-Pope is not a Pope who becomes really bad and evil. No, an anti-pope is a man who never was pope to begin with, and he just claims to be pope. We've had dozens of them throughout church history, but the, the final anti-pope will not only be just another anti-pope, he'll be the false prophet of Revelation who works in tandem with the antichrist. Now, some people say the antichrist will be the anti-pope. I, I don't think so. I think the antichrist is going to be presented as a world ruler because uh, he'll want to have control of the whole world, but he will need to work in tandem with the one controlling the church who will be the anti-pope sitting on the seat of Peter. Jesus didn't say anything about the city state, a certain city state within Italy. He said, you are Peter and upon this rock, I'll build my church. There's no guarantee that the city of Rome will remain in the faith. In fact, it already hasn't like the Avignon papacy, the, the real right. pot, the real promise of Christ was in France. So there's already precedent for this and God allowed that so that we don't get too surprised in what's coming. All sorts of prophecies that said Rome will be destroyed. It will become the seat of the Antichrist. That does not mean that an actual pope will become the Antichrist. That's not possible. The promises of Christ prevent that. And Jesus the fathers said, of the church, yeah, sorry to interrupt, but the fathers of the church too has spoke pretty overwhelmingly. And Father Charles Armijan has spoken very clearly about that in, in the, his series that's now in a book, And in the Present World and the Mysteries of the Future Life, very clearly that the Antichrist will be a Jew. And that's yeah. important and because he will deceive the Jew. The Jewish people aren't going to believe that a non-Jew is the Messiah. So he's going right. to have, he will come from an unholy union, uh, some, you know, some sort of uh, unholiest, I guess, of unions, but he will be a Jew. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Th that's one of the key things about the Antichrist is that there's still Jews remaining and <laughs> they're remaining because they think they're still awaiting the Messiah. They, they don't realize the Messiah already came 2000 years ago. They are. It, it, they are so primed to welcome the Antichrist because they've been waiting for 2,000 extra years and they should have been. So mm -hmm. when this guy comes and says he's the Messiah, he'll of course have to present as a Jew in order to uh, finalize that deception. And and the, the, this factors in usually to the ET deception also. Obviously, the Antichrist won't literally be an extraterrestrial. My whole point is that there's no such thing as aliens and we can be certain there's not. But I think that there'll be some sort of claim about that. I, I don't know the detail. I don't pretend to know the details. Maybe he'll claim to be in. in uh, maybe he'll claim to be an emissary of the extraterrestrials. Maybe he'll claim to be in contact with them. Maybe he'll claim he is an extraterrestrial. I don't know. Uh, it'll be a parody of Jesus, who actually was from not this earth. He actually was from heaven. So the Antichrist will also claim to be not from this earth, I think, but in a diabolical, aping way. Anyway, there's a number of Jews now who are explicitly awaiting the Messiah with respect to extraterrestrials, like Avi Loeb. I've talked about in a number of recent webcasts. He's this global celebrity Harvard professor, physicist, who's saying he's found alien technology and he is, he's a Jew 
and he's eagerly awaiting the arrival of the Messiah on a spacecraft. Global mm -hmm. celebrity Harvard physicist professor, as big as you can get, saying the Messiah is coming on a spacecraft, and he's a Jew. We've got Raelianism, it's huge, tens of thousands of adherents, UFO religion, trying to build a third temple in Israel as the embassy of the extraterrestrial civilizations. It's, it's unabashedly apocalyptic and antichristic. But anyway, so mm -hmm. the Antichrist, yeah, so an anti-pope, back to what you were saying, an anti-pope will be someone who never was pope to begin with. So just as I believe we will have a great Catholic monarch, um, a, a real saintly king ruling over Christendom again, he will not be the pope, of course not. He will have to work in tandem with the angelic pontiff, who's also prophesied in scripture, this incredibly holy pope. And Jesus tells Louisa that th there will come a Pope who makes these revelations his mission. Just as Pope St. John Paul II made the divine mercy his mission, I believe that the angelic pontiff will make the divine will his mission. Mm -hmm. And he will proclaim, he will usher in the era of peace and the, and the um, great Catholic monarch will be governing the Christendom in tandem with the great angelic pontiff governing the church. But in tandem with this, we will have the antichrist governing the, sec the, the majority of the world, those who have uh, rejected the graces of the warning. And we will have the false prophet who will be an anti-pope claiming to be uh, sitting on the holy place as scripture prophesies, but not actually. Yeah, sure, he'll move into the Vatican, but he won't be the pope. The real pope will be elsewhere. I'm so, not saying we're in that now, but that will be coming soon, I think. But it, okay, so how does this factor into, I believe it was Garabin Daw, and I don't think it's the only Private Revelation talked about this, but as far as the numbering of popes that were to come, you know, afterward, mm -hmm. and I, I still get confused, even though they only talk about, oh, there's three or there's three or four more to come. I'm like, well, how hard is it to mess up numbers, you know? But right. it, it, I still think that there's confusion about that, and so if it's not if there, if it's not Francis, which I don't believe it is, but they would have if these things if these uh, private revelations are accurate. It, it would seem to, it would it would be the next one but then where does peter mm -hmm. then peter the roman fit in i guess because if he's the, he's the last right of the era or maybe i'm jumping into something we don't get into here but um it just seems like these things with uh, are, are are pretty close with a fragile i mean has, i mean pope francis for somebody who's been so fragile in health he's been he's lasted quite a while you know it's it's interesting right, right. Um, mm -hmm. but I, I, we live at a time where things happen very quickly. Major things happen almost like when nobody's thinking about them. Even if you're aware when it happens, you're like, wow, you're really caught off. Like, oh my gosh, it just, just happened. Um, mm -hmm. and I mean, I, I, I how would, I'm gonna say, how could that happen? But in our climate, how could that be pulled off an anti-pope? Just to be kind of a devil's advocate, like we have media now, people reporting cardinals would be walking out unless they're the ones saying many, many cardinals. The election was a sham and rigged, like like our presidential election. If they came out from the beginning and said it was rigged, mm -hmm. then how would you? I mean, what's the difference between that and then people who are having the arguments that Pope Francis is the anti-pope? Well, look at how many people are saying. Saying this document from Fernandez is great just because the Pope's signature is on it. We've got every trustworthy bishop in the world saying this document is garbage, but still we've got huge amounts of professional Orthodox Catholics saying, oh no, it's great, it's fine. So when this anti-Pope comes, yes, there will be a division. Like we will not be left as orphans. And that's one reason we, we know that Francis is the Pope. God will not leave us as orphans. We don't have a single cardinal saying Francis is not the Pope. You really think that God is just going to abandon you and let you as some layman decide that Francis is not the Pope? No. It, that, that's, so when we really have an anti-Pope, there will be a division among the Cardinals. There will be, and that's why you got to figure out right now who's trustworthy and who's not. But look at how many, frankly, evil men have been made Cardinals recently. The decks have been stacked. They will lie through their teeth without giving it a second thought. And they will claim that this man, who they know full well is not the Pope, they will claim he's the Pope. And they will have the media, the world's media, behind them. And they will delude most people. Wow. The only way I can think they could pull it off would be if they like literally called, they had the person calling the names. or do they, I don't know how they do it. If they pass it to two people, or is it only one who reads them? 
could just call like and somebody's doing the tally who just would intentionally call one because what do they do as soon as it's over they burn them mm. Right. Anyway, I don't even not, think they'll bother with any of that. I don't even think they'll care about what happens in the Sistine Chapel. Is that where they have the conclave in the Sistine Chapel? Wherever they have it, I don't think they'll even care. I think that these evil cardinals who we now who already have their red hats, as I'm speaking, I think that this is all colluded. I think they'll have it all colluded beforehand. They'll just walk out after and claim that, oh no, this is actually the guy we elected. So then, how would a, how would the valid pope be elected? Is this going to be coinciding with the anti pope? Yeah, so, so this I is think like that Avignon have... again. They're just going to call another one and say we're going to elect it, another one, and then people are just right. going to trust that that one was valid. Uh, um, I, this so is you're going to have is, to. It's it, you're not going to be able to figure it out directly. It's going to be too hard, which is why it's so important right now to 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 know your faith, right, and to know which bishops and cardinals right now are trustworthy. Because when the time comes, you're going to have to know who to trust and you're going to have to know the faith. Now, even if you're a little bit confused on who exactly to trust, and we all should be a little bit confused on that because none of us can read souls, but you can read catechism and mm -hmm. you will see the anti-pope. It, it might not be the first day, but it'll be soon. He will start injecting all sorts of heresies into his preaching. And the authentic pope, he will be sticking with the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, and he will be a true shepherd. He, as, as the prophecy of St. Malachi says, he will shepherd, what does it say? He will shepherd his flock amidst many tribulations or something like that. Um, right. He will he, he will really, you'll know. If you have an ounce of discernment, you will know. I mean, he will he will probably shine like Moses for all I know <laughs> after the Yeah, I think I, th the Lord. I think the difference will be probably pretty glaring as far as mm -hmm. the agenda will be immediate. When you know, mm -hmm. and then of course it's going to be, <laughs> and yet for those who are truly close to the Lord and awake and faithful, the, that it would be very clear. But for many, the, it won't be if if you don't have that vision it, that there, the spirit of deception will be so strong. You just kind of right. wonder. I like COVID was kind of a a, a a test of that too. You know, we know so many mm -hmm. you know good people and. We would say okay, good Catholics are faithful, but like they just went along with no mm -hmm. scrutiny whatsoever with whatever it was. Um, well, interesting. Um, just a couple more things uh, to maximize our time here, um, and it kind of ties into this. You've mentioned this in the past. I'm curious if you've had any more insight or things to share, because there are when I talk to people. Fear usually enters in, and that's never a good thing because fear, you know, we need to have faith, not fear. Um, but this possible, this not possibility, but uh, this notion of refuges for the faithful is that something that you uphold from? I'm, not, I'm trying to think of where that was drawn from, but. What, what are your thoughts on that? Will there be, from what you've um, read and followed, is that going to be something that's going to be offered to people? I mean, that's like a parallel story in the midst of all this chaos. Mm -hmm. so that they, it's, It almost sounds like a movie. This remnant will be led to these refuges. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so yeah, hard. I, think I, I want someone to make I, a I movie it. out of this to see how they can actually put <laughs> these pieces together right. because my mind can't right. do that. I was like... But uh, there's too much to put together. Yeah. But but the, look, the bottom line is there's going to be chastisements that are so unbelievably overwhelming that if God did not intervene in an extraordinary way, the elect would be completely wiped out. And yet that's not possible because the elect are going to, you know, the remnant, they're going to be the ones repopulating the world during the era. So clearly there's going to have to be a certain group of people that are protected. So God could do that just by protecting each person that he wants protected in their own homes. He could do that, or he could do it as he did in the Acts of the Apostles in communities. Why wouldn't he do it that way? Like, I don't understand mm -hmm. these people who just, who attack the idea of refuges so much. It just for, forget about any individual prophet or private revelation of prophecy about it. It's just nothing else makes as much logical sense that of course, in the times of the great persecution of the Antichrist, why wouldn't God call those faithful who have stayed true to him and the true magisterium and rejected 
the per, the um, allurements of the Antichrist, why wouldn't God consolidate them into individual places that are miraculously protected from the chastisements and the persecutions of the Antichrist? I don't understand how anyone could have such problems with that. Now, I understand how someone would be concerned if I came out and said, everybody, start building a refuge. Like, But that's never what I've said. I've, I've always said the opposite. I've always said, don't do that unless God has very specifically and clearly called you to do that. To, and if, if people still take issue with me saying that, how dare you? Because that's not, I, I'm saying follow God's will. So how dare someone condemn me for telling my listeners to follow God's will? Like, that's crazy. Uh, so that's all I'm saying is, is don't go building a refuge unless God has clearly told you to. And on the other hand, do everything that God has clearly told you to do. Now, I think all of us should be have basic preparedness. I think that's wise. I don't understand those who condemn me for saying that either, but they just always want an excuse to condemn me. But yeah, in terms of full-blown refuges, um, there's, of course, Father Michel was one uh, who prophesied those, and yes, some of his prophecies failed. That doesn't mean all of his prophecies are false. I don't really go there anymore just because it's difficult to... Na- like. I kind of have a little... I kind of have a, a policy where if there's like a really clear prophetic failure, I just kind of leave that seer aside. And maybe I shouldn't, I don't know. But um, I'm not I'm not at all condemning Father Michel. He, he very well may still have valid prophecies, but it's just difficult to, to know. Talk to Xavier. Talk to Xavier. Right. So he's, Xavier, he's... He, he, he will definitely give you his thoughts on, on uh-huh. Father Michel for at least... For consideration, and of course, he's more, much more entrenched into that whole issue with them because he's been privy to conversations that have taken place before, during, and after the one failed prophecy that he was talking about. Oops, drop my mic here. And um, but anyway, I actually want to get him on at some point, see if he's got time for me. But yeah, I think. All right, Mike. But there have been other. It's not just Father Michel. Like there's, it's escaped my mind at the moment. But we've got a couple of posts up on on Countdown about it. There have been certainly plenty of other prophecies about refuges. So even if you don't want to, even if someone wants to completely leave aside and reject Father Michel, which I do not do, I just I, I don't go there anymore. Just again, but I'm not condemning him. That he may that may very well be a valid prophecy from him. Right. Even if it's not, there's plenty of other uh, prophecies about refuges. And again, above all, common sense. Why wouldn't God want to protect His faithful remnant in communities with each other, where He feeds His flock? That makes the most sense to me. And I believe we have that to look forward to. Which is another reason I say have no fear. If anything, you know, the hard you're you're afraid of the future right now. You know what? The hardest times, I think, I hope I'm not too bold in saying this, but the hardest times are right now because we are in this twilight zone where the deceptions and the apostasy are swirling about us, but we don't yet have the great miraculous interventions of the warning and the refuges. So, yeah, the church, the, the chastisements and persecutions, objectively speaking, they're going to get way worse. But God's grace for those who want it is going to completely overwhelm the objective difficulties mm-hmm. and yet uh, kind of on a broad cosmic scale global scale that hasn't yet happened so i think that right now is actually the most trying point that we're in and if you can hold on right now there's no reason for you to be afraid of the future at all just have absolute trust and even more so excitement about what's coming Th- this is absolutely exciting even if you live in albany new york there's, there's even if a- you live in the middle of the belly of the beast as i do <laughs> <laughs> um, Daniel I can, can be positive at, there. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> exactly. I haven't even been to Albany. Maybe if you were in New York oh. City, I feel. <laughs> well, that's a that's a very uh, important point. I'd probably say it's probably the heart of of all of these conversations because you know a lot of the people who are going to watch um, our podcasts are pretty much those who are always listening and tuning in and maybe looking for something new that they haven't heard somewhere else and whether it be unraveling the universal conspiracy of things and others are looking for like, gosh, is there another glimmer of hope that I can find in this conversation because the other Stay ones- tuned for the next show because that's where we'll have that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, um, I want to skip down a couple of things here. Um, this is, is, it is a little bit of a shifting gear, but this is a question that I've had. I, not many have talked about. I think Xavier had mentioned it once recently, and it was kind of p- 
piqued me again. But since we were, when you mentioned uh, the whole UFO deception of things, something that's not a deception is this whole thing of when God is speaking to, and he is speaking to us even now in this way, and has been, if you look at 2016, 2017, all these celestial things that have happened. And um, as kind of harbingers of things, whether it be the blood moons that we've had, I don't know if you remember all those, 2015, 2016, all lending up the Feast of Passover <laughs> and, 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 the, uh, and tabernacles, you know, back-to-back -back years, then the, uh, the Revelation 12 uh, constellation, did you see that? Remember that one? I think that we're, and I've seen some things uh, um, beginning to almost hint on it, is in light of these UFO things and aliens, is something that is real, and that is this um, the, these near-Earth objects, asteroids, or maybe even a comet. That's very clear, even in biblical imagery. And it was even, mm -hmm. I didn't know this, this was even, this had happened even the time Our Lady appeared in Guadalupe. This was recent findings I mean, that I discovered. And Father or Monsignor Chavez, who was like the world expert, when he had discovered all these kinds of things, he was just blown away because he didn't even know that some of these things and all these mm -hmm. earthquakes. But is this this near uh, Earth object, an asteroid called Apophis, Apophis? Based on, have you heard of this? No. All right. Well, we won't get into that too much, but it's interesting, interesting in that this object is the one that has been projected to be, that, the, from what they know, to be the closest that will pass between Earth. Almost, like it'll mm. pass between, I think, even the moon and the earth. It's like, it's something wow. know, it's, that's that close, but it's something like, they're saying it's not going to hit. But anyway, are there other aliens behind it? <laughs> well, <laughs> <Should> we... <laughs> it, yeah, Heaven's Maybe Gate will be uh, re resurrected. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Um, but what's interesting, though, is that it, it, it'll pass. There's two times where it'll be closest, and one will be in the first one will be 2029. And I had actually listened to a podcast about this a long time ago, maybe about a year and a half. But it was a guy who really understood. He worked for intelligence agencies and things. And he was like, this is a huge thing to follow. And it always made me the reason I'm putting it out there. Just like you're putting out the alien deception. Because some people might say, like, well, I'm not even hearing much about that. I don't really listen to the things you are. But it's going to be coming more. Is that he was saying by 2025, listen for the rhetoric to be talking more about the significance of that happening because mm -hmm. they they're going to be using a lot of these things even for fear to be able to control right. populations and they've had all these different things that they've been testing over the years and anyway i was just curious if you had thought about it because the apophis is also the based off of the egyptian god it has a different name but they all have the same in, in the mythology and it's the god of darkness. Hmm. And Yves Dupont talked about um, the prophets of the church and its history. Talk about there's going to be a celestial, like a comet, like a that, comet. That's the happen. cover. That's the cover of the book, right? Exactly. The cover of yeah. But this, but this comet or an asteroid is actually a very significant figure. And he was talking about how it'll coincide with something like that when the, the three days of darkness would happen as well. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Had I not heard some of these things that I was listening from this guy that was very well articulated and sourced, and then revisiting a few of these other prophecies, um, and then of course a lot of people are interested in the three days of darkness, you know, and and what will go on during that time, and then twenty twenty nine, and all the calendars that we're looking at, it's like wow. But he said, look, it's not the twenty twenty nine date that's the biggest. That it's going to be. They're going to hype this up beginning around twenty twenty five. And with all these obsessions of trying to redirect or um, the possibility of redirecting these neo objects. And we've already landed on one. And, you know, the trajectory of one was already kind of slightly modified, but it won't hit us. And um, I was just curious if you had any thoughts on that. Because when I was doing some research, that popped up and I was like, oh, I forgot it. So, and yeah, well, the more about fear they can, yeah. 
the more fear they can stir up, the more easily they can justify uh, utterly massive uh, expenditures, and the more easily they can justify massive clampdowns on our civil rights. They'll conjure up some reason why it's necessary. And that's, so that's, of course, huge that that's even been in fiction as well. You know, I think of, what was it, uh, Armageddon, and what was the other one? Deep Impact. You know, yeah, Deep Impact. But... Yeah, so that's that's and I the same thing with the ET deception. I think there's the directly diabolical aspect of it, but there's also the psyop aspect of it. Where if if the government can pretend there's an extraterrestrial threat, they could justify a greater increase in military expenditures and clampdowns on civil rights than ever before in history. That's the most convenient psyop I can imagine. So yeah, same thing with an asteroid that could do that. But also there's of course the prophecy that the warning. So we got the three days of darkness to think about. Maybe that will have something to do with an asteroid or a comet passing by. But there's also the uh, Garabandel prophecy that the warning will coincide with some celestial collision. Some people have said mm -hmm. asteroid, that would be an asteroid. And maybe two asteroids colliding, two stars colliding. It's not clear, but that it will it likely the warning will happen at the same moment as some sort of celestial event is happening, which could have to do with something like that. Now, I, I speculate the warning will be before then. And I, because it seems that things have to kind of conclude by then. But maybe what you mm -hmm. mentioned with this asteroid could, that that would make perfect sense in terms of the timeline I kind of tentatively have in mind now. Um, that could for make the warning? perfect sense for, for the three days of darkness. Oh, yeah. So, I was going to yeah. say, yeah, the warning seems pretty yeah. imminent. But The warning is looking like, and again, I, I do not know, do not say I'm predicting yeah, this. I'm not. I have, I, have, on this. I have no predictions and I have no prophecies because I'm not a prophet. But Mm -hmm. With the Synod and the apostasy and Russia and World War Three and the popes, like everything seems to be converging on the warning this upcoming year. Yeah, the checklist is there. And then it's also yeah. the because the miracle will take place within that time, within a year. But but um, Conchita, I think we said that or, or maybe another visionary that it would be closer to the warning rather than later to it. Um that it would coincide we there's there's specifics about the the miracle because it has it'll take place on a feast on a, right. a, a thursday right or a feast of eucharistic martyr yeah and then thursday was, eucharistic martyr in between a certain few months but not on a great holy day there's a bunch of and characteristics an even year nice. and even, even yeah, year the, even year is supposed to be the warning but i i've not oh, been okay. able to verify that i i can't okay. and that, that might be true but i haven't been able to verify it yeah i've been able but, to verify the original source but yeah there's it's have you it, narrowed down what you think is the most likely miracle uh, date? I, I haven't. I, I gave up on this years ago. Yeah, I, like, I kind of give up on that too. But the fact that things are really coinciding in the sense of uh, objectively, like you know, if these things, if these conditions must be met, well, it can mm -hmm. only fit a certain amount of, you know, circumstances. And, right. um, and if it's not this coming year, then it's i don't know i don't know how many years out the uh, eight yeah. or something like that or 10 or yeah. 30 now, 36 or something i don't know what it is like 20 36 or something i right. don't know i mean it's i think we're we know, we're always we're always like a course correction you know like like on our maps where it's like recomputing of things and right. of course you know it's like you don't want to get obsessed with it but there's also part of it too where for those who aren't awake it's important because I, I, when I when I reflect on it, it's I know even though I'm trying to keep myself in the state of grace, it's pro it would probably still be quite shocking. Even though some say, "Oh, if you are in the state of grace, then you'll welcome it; it'll be a joyful experience." Well, uh, maybe that might be for a few, um, but I really think painful. it's painful, yeah, painful it's, joyful experience. Yeah, maybe a kind of like a purgative one of like you just right. Um, right. you, you know, the hope and, and, and you see it as, okay, Lord, thank you for showing me, like, I really, you know, these are the things I really need to do. And I also right. get to, you know, to see the impact of my sins. And, um, but I, you know, for me, it's whether people think I'm crazy or not, I think it's important to share that with others because when you think of how many people are going to be completely shocked and not prepared for that in any way spiritually, I almost feel like it's somewhat of a a lack of of a spiritual work of mercy to not let them know. Mm -hmm. Um because for some it may be their last hope, 
you know, I, I don't know. It, so it's it's become a little bit more important to me because I'm like, well, why even talk about this whole thing if it's just to freak you out or, <laughs> you know, I, I see it as, as an act of mercy just to have awareness that it's going to be coming. Um, and so don't give up. Yeah. I mean, how yeah. else can we have any hope for the world without hope in this cosmic divine intervention? Yeah. Hope uh, for makes, anything. Just, yeah. Your With marriage? the world as it is now. And yeah, even in even our individual lives, like don't give up because God is going to intervene. That doesn't mean put off anything. Of course, there'd be a wrong way of taking this as well. But our exhortation here is hold on, hold on. That was my last blog post. Hold on a little longer. Mm -hmm. it, 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 the you know what's the most cliche advice you can imagine one day at a time and okay. sure there's nothing wrong with nothing wrong with that keep <laughs> holding on god is going to intervene he's going to intervene in your life he's going to intervene in the whole world and you need to simply persevere perseverance mm -hmm. the most underrated virtue well wrapping things up on that note um what can you give us from Servant of God, Louisa Picaretta, that will help us alleviate any fears that we have in the present and also for what is to come? That would, oh. you talked about getting, you know, the excitement of these times. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it's just a glimpse of what she says of what the era of peace will be like. And so it's like, you know, hold on because of what's coming. We talked about that the last time we had our podcast, but uh, what, what can you share in that regard? I know exactly what I want to say, but now I got to, oh, and I did, again, I did not know I was going to be asked this, but I already <laughs> know what I want to say, but my computer is taking so long to open it, open up the quote here. Now I can't remember what I shared in our last, would you, so, so that I don't bore your listeners with no, the we, same well, thing. Do, do you remember we, what we I simply looked at? Um, what, what did the era of peace look like? Well, what was revealed to uh, Louisa on that, because I, I was reading through your book, Thy Will Be Done, and I got so excited reading it, oh, I remember because we're talking we're about, about the veil being That's... so lifted that the communion of saints will be alive like in a way we can never comprehend, mm -hmm. in a very tangible, real way. Even the the music of the spheres will be something that will be re um, will have a, a kind of a faculty that will be able to to sense that again. Like it's like living mm -hmm. in literally another dimension. Yet we're on Earth, and yet we're not even at the end of the world. We're just we're in a, a, right. an era where it's Jesus. Yeah, it's it's the echo. It's like we're not in heaven yet, but Jesus says it's like the echo of heaven. That's what he wants Earth to be, like the echo of heaven. Like we're not seeing him yet, but we're doing his will anyway, and we're basking in the glory of his will, even without the beatific vision. That's what that's his death. That's his desire for the whole world, and that, that's going to happen. It has to happen before the end of time. We don't know how long it'll last, but before the end of time, God is going to win. He's going to win at the end of time. He's going to win beyond the end of time. And he's also going to win within time. And we are at those times. We are approaching those times now. And then finally, my computer opened up the section. And just stop me if, I, if this is what I shared last time, because I can't remember what I concluded with then. But when you ask me why, what I can leave you with from Louisa and to inspire us through these times ahead, my, my uh, mind went to just exactly what you reminded us of uh, in the middle of this of this show about our lady marking uh her children did, and have i shared that did i share that quote from jesus to louisa in the last uh, one i mean i don't know if you do i'm aware of that but i don't know if you shared it so and if okay and if well so, just it's been a since, long time we need to be reminded i need to yeah be so since you brought that up anyway let me go ahead and share that quote jesus told louisa and if you want if you happen to have her writings with you you can look this up on uh, the diary entry from June 6th, 1935. He said, you must know that I always love my children, my beloved creatures. I would turn myself inside out so as to not see them struck. And in another translation, I'll pause there. Jesus says, I would eviscerate myself. I would rip out my organs, in other words, to not see you struck by chastisements. He's not even talking about eternal damnation now. He's just talking about chastisements on earth. I, I would eviscerate myself. To not see you struck. 
So much so, back to what Jesus tells Louisa here, so much so that in the gloomy times that are coming, I have placed them all in the hands of my celestial mother. To her, I have entrusted them so that she may keep them for me under her safe mantle. I will give her all those whom she will want. Even death will have no power over those who will be in the custody of my mother. And then Louisa recounts the vision that Jesus gave her after he said that to her. She writes, Now, while he was saying this, my dear Jesus showed me with facts how the sovereign queen descended from heaven with an unspeakable majesty and a tenderness fully maternal. She went around in the midst of creatures throughout all nations, and she marked her dear children, those who were not to be touched by the scourges. Whoever my celestial mother touched, the scourges had no power to touch those creatures. Sweet Jesus gave his mother the right to bring to safety whomever she pleased. Mm. He has given her the right. Jesus has given Our Lady the right to mark all of her children so that these apocalyptic scourges that are coming can't even touch them. Wow. How do you become her child? By consecrating yourself to her, by praying the rosary every day. It's very simple. Be all a roads, child of Our Lady. <laughs> all roads lead to Fatima. And mm-hmm. and yeah, and all of the, even the the apparitions since then, Aki to Japan, nineteen seventy three, October thirteenth, the message there, all of these messages of hope always they all come back to that to the message of Fatima. Medjugorje is like the kind of yep. the magnitude of that magnification of mm-hmm. you know the prayer and the fasting and you know filling in even more praying the Rosary every day. Now pray if you can all the mysteries. It's like Fatima, you know boosted if i could use that phrase um but refuge marking all these things what does our, what our lady say june 13th my immaculate heart will be your refuge in the way that will mm-hmm. lead you back to god and i my my kind of final word on this is i was struck in light of what we're just talking about right now and i and i was praying about Lord, what is it that you want us to be focusing on in 2024? No matter what's coming, kind of like a movie, you know, when you're like, they're at this point, it's like, whatever's behind these walls, we're going to face it without fear, whatever it is. Like, maybe it's Lord of the Rings, I saw that. That was, that, was, that, was, that was Gandalf to the soldiers of Gondor. Yeah, exactly. Right so I, that, yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I've had that there. And it's been, um, it was the readings for the Feast of the Holy Family. And I was sick. So I went to a later mass and kind of sat in the side chapel. And so I didn't go with my family earlier because they thought I wasn't going to go at all. I said, no, I need to go. And I'll, you know, of course, listen to the readings. And so I was there and I was expecting, oh yeah, maybe a passage again on like Ephesians and the wives and duties of wives and husbands. And sometimes we hear, but it was all, all about faith and all about trust with Abraham. That Mm. he, he had to have faith or he had faith in the resurrection before God even re- really revealed himself to, to anyone. Like that really hit me right. that his son right. would, God would have to resurrect his son to fulfill what he right. just promised him because like that's, imp- it's impossible. God doesn't change. And it's the same thing now, but the generosity that he gives, because if, if refuge is in Mary's immaculate heart, he's like, no matter where you are, okay, whether you're in downtown Chicago I, mean, I don't recommend that or New York, New York. Um, you know, I mean, these are places like, but th- the point is on a serious note, it, the Jesuits in Hiroshima, the Franciscans mm. in Nagasaki, Fra- you know, Colby's Franciscans. It's like, God, he gives us tastes of these things that they are real, but we have to have that real trust and that faith. Like Jesus says to St. Faustina, and you know the quote, you know, to the extent that a soul trusts in me is the extent that I will pour out my graces and mercy upon them. Mm-hmm. The key is trust and to the level of your trust. Is, so I just felt like th- if there's one thing that we take away is to fortify our homes in faith and in trust, and especially as the heads of our household, um, to exemplify that because our children will look to us and, you know, my kids hear this stuff in context and, you know, and sometimes just around because it's the world in which they live. And and I'm sure they have thoughts, maybe a fear that get in at times. And But 
the it, it it comes down to that faith and trust and believe in what yeah what our lady said what our lord revealed to Luisa Picaretta it's um it's it's like the national treasure i I've, i always think about that when i think of consecration to mary and the book's got freemasons and the movie has freemasons and all that but is that, i love the movie but when it gets to the end remember that have you seen it uh, what what national what's treasure with Nicolas Cage? He's like the I, treasure you know, I map. I think I have actually. Yeah, I oh, think I maybe, have. Okay, but I don't. I don't remember it. <laughs> okay, well, I don't know if you watch movies or not, but I'm a big movie person for better for worse. But anyway, there's a part in the movie where he gets to the very end. He's all he's trying to find the treasure of treasures at the at the. <laughs> I talk about the Freemasons now, but they took and they hid and anyway, as a treasure hunter. But at the very end, he figures it out. And mm -hmm. he's, it's something that he had with him all the, all along from the, since the beginning of the movie. Sorry, it's a spoiler. Uh, but, okay. And it's, it said the secret lies with Charlotte. And and in the end, he figures it out. And I always think of like the secret lies with Mary because at the end, he's like, could it really be that simple? And he puts this thing and it's the key that unlocks the door to the treasure of all treasures. And, uh, and what is the essence of Mary's holiness? It's her absolute trust, which compelled her to do what? To incarnate that trust in the simple true. word, fiat. Fiat mihi secundum verbum tuum. Be it done unto me according to thy word. But if you can pronounce that fiat, the depth of your heart, that is how you put that faith and trust into an actual reality in your life. So just repeat those words as much as you can. Jesus, I trust in you, thy will be done. I give you my will. Please give me yours in return. The more you can say thy will be done from the depths of your heart, the more you will actually succeed in living that and feeling it. Even if you don't feel it now, say it and try to mean it. And every time you say it, try to mean it more and more. And eventually you'll start living that. Amen. Even if you feel like you're not yet. Just keep Amen. That. Well, that's a perfect note to end things on. I just... My wife always reminded me, Peter, it's always good to know when you need to stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I would love to go on all night. But and, if, I, and I, I promise, I said, so promise much. you would you would not be held past midnight. And we're almost there, but we're not there. <laughs> we're not yet. So, we're, we're, I know you we're never succeeding. mentioned time and interviews and all that. It's the eternal now and what whatever. But you know, <laughs> this is how it is. You get somebody, you know, you're three hours ahead. For me, it's about time to go to bed, but a lot earlier. And uh, I'm I'm grateful, so grateful for you spending this time. I think there's so much to take away from our conversation, different levels from curiosities, the interest to like, wow, like the ending I think was exactly what the Holy Spirit brought us there without any planning whatsoever. Yeah. Um, and I want to encourage everyone to do a few things. One is to pray for Daniel, pray for his family, pray for his, his apostolate, because uh, it's very needed. And I think Daniel is, uh, he, he represents such a, a, a voice of clarity on the messages of Luisa Picaretta. And you can find in his works um, all the th arguments of things of like, why listen to her and what's, where's the church's status? I mean, we could waste time, I don't want to say waste time, but it's, it's there. He has it in there. <laughs> Daniel has, uh, what, three books, right? Three encyclopedic I, volumes, three uh, three parts of the Summa, of three parts. But if of you want to start with, if you if you're looking for my works on the divine will, I recommend th this one. Thy will be yes. done. Yes, that's I think the, the easiest to start with for that. Okay. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Thy will be done, Daniel. Where can they one uh, follow what you're doing with your blog posts and whatever work you're doing, and then two, how can they get Thy will be done? And also, uh, only man bears God's image. And there's there's the huge one yeah only man bears his image there so oh, the, yeah, yeah thank you so much um you can find me on here on youtube or or twitter or my blog it's all just dsd o'connor and um if you want to find my books you can look up either of them on amazon is the easiest place to get them search you know thy will be done daniel o'connor or only man bears his image daniel o'connor there's a number of other daniel o'connors there but it should be pretty obvious which which one is me if you see if you see what the other ones are writing about <laughs> All right. Well, I, I, I definitely, um, thy will be done has been uh, made a big impact on me and I kind of cherry pick through things. Um, and I think that's, that uh, people might see the, the only man 
bears bears his image. And look at that. Don't be intimidated. I heard you talk about it's like an encyclopedia. You could just scroll right, right through the contents. You don't need and go to go right to where thing, you yeah. wanted to have a question about, and that's awesome. Yeah. It's like a summa. Yeah, that was. I I knew that that few people would read this whole thing because it's ridiculously big, and that's why the, the table of contents is extremely detailed. You just take a look at the table of contents, and you'll be taken directly to um, the question you want to have answered. And I, there's so many lies floating out there right now by these Catholics promoting aliens. They're saying Padre Pio endorsed aliens. They're saying, oh, the Genesis 6 is aliens. They're saying JP2 endorsed aliens. They're saying, I, I refute all of those claims in this book. Those are all lies. So you, you'll find it all addressed in there. Wow. What about the Nephilim? Do you ever yeah. address that? I address, I address the Nephilim. I address the Mark of Cain. I address the stars of heaven in Revelation. I, I, oh, I need, yeah, to, I, I need I, to get that. Yeah. I, I think I address that. everything in it. <laughs> Wow. Well, yeah. I need to get a signed copy from you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I will go and I will order it and I will support Daniel and his work. And then I'll Thank mail you. it to you and then you can sign it. And then uh, I'll have it probably cost a hundred bucks to mail this huge thing. I know. <laughs> well, it's been a, it's been a joy, Daniel. Thank you so much. And thank you. The honor yeah, is all mine. <laughs> Well, I Truly. You while I can, you know, you're just on this podcast now and this one, another one. Next thing you know, you was well, maybe you'll be on Tucker and then yeah, I won't be able to, won't be able to access there. you. I got to get on there. Yeah, <laughs> oh, you'll I, be able to access me. I'll always, I'll always be unimportant. Don't worry. Yeah. But then I'll have to go <laughs> through your handler or handlers. <laughs> I'll never be able to afford one of those. Yeah. Hey, we're wrapping up. Quick question. Completely unrelated, yes. but it's in my notes and it's not a joke. Would you ever go to Ireland? to on an evangelization mission if you had enough funds that was to uh, take care of you for a month um i got i got invited there uh this last year and i just couldn't fit it in with my schedule unfortunately i'd love to go there but a month uh without it'd be a bit rough on my wife being away from the family for a month yeah <laughs> so i don't All know right. i'd have to pray about that and see god's will well, maybe God's providence would make it so it's an offer you couldn't refuse. But uh, maybe, maybe I've I've prayed to go and evangelize Ireland for a long time. But I've prayed, I pray, Lord, send a, you know, a couple of people. Bachelor. Yeah, at least send send a Sam, send a, send a, a Samwise Gamgee or. Uh, uh. <laughs> I'm not saying you're Samwise, but anyway, I just thought about that because. Um, that place holds a, a special place in my heart and it's part of my own heritage as well. And they've given uh, so yeah, much. I'm, I'm like, yeah, how would you, how could, you, how could that be evangelized? You know, how, how can yeah. that be? And uh, be, also, if, it's, if you had a few people, if God provided the means, just say, look, for a month, you're just going to go around. You're not waiting for invitations. Mm. You're going to just go. Yeah, anyway, just walk the whole country. I mean, Daniel might days. do something like that. Maybe, I, mean, maybe I would love. I would absolutely love to evangelize. I, I would love to get back to the motherland. I've never been there, even though I'm mostly Irish. Uh, I've never uh, been there, uh, but yeah, I would love to. All right. Well, I was just curious and, you know about the, that. the the divine will is exploding in Ireland. That that that's oh. going to re evangelize Ireland. I think. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that at all. Big time. Oh, awesome. Big time. Yeah. All right. Check out the works of uh, Francis Hogan. She's a great EWTN scripture. Uh, commentator, and she has great divine will lessons as well, Francis Hogan. Interesting. Yeah. All right, I, yeah. I'll do that. All right. Well, thank you, Daniel. God bless you. Thank and, you. Um, God bless you. Look forward to having you back next time. Looking forward to it as well. Keep up the good work. All right. You too. Right is right if nobody is right. Wrong is wrong if everybody is wrong. And believe me. In this error-infested world, what we really need is a church and an authority that is right not when the world is right, but one that is right when the world is wrong. Never in history has the prayer of the rosary been more needed to save our families, our countries, and defeat the evils of the world than now. The Fulton Sheen Institute worked closely with the Roma Rosary to develop the most unique, beautiful, and meaningful rosary that was inspired by Fulton Sheen's World Mission Rosary. 
This special handcrafted rosary continues Sheen's passion to support the mission of the church to evangelize the entire world. Each decade of the rosary has a different color, which corresponds with a different continent. Yellow for Asia, red for the Americas, white for Europe, blue for the nations of Oceania, and green for Africa. Each Fulton Sheen Aroma Rosary comes with a set of four pure essential oil blends that have been chosen for their therapeutic and theological significance. These blends correspond to the four mysteries of the rosary. Simply choose the oil for the mystery of the day, drop a small drop in the palm of your hand, and massage the oil over the surface, being sure to catch the lava beads. You're good to go and your prayer will linger longer with these beautiful aromatic notes. Every Fulton Sheen Aroma Rosary you purchase supports our mission to fight the battle for the hearts and souls of the Christian family and lead our world back to God. So visit the Fulton Sheen Institute's store and pick up your beautiful Fulton Sheen Aroma Rosary today. Get one for you, your family members, and your close friends, and don't forget your pastor. Thank you so much for your prayers and your support.